morning and welcome to Unity of Joplin. We have a new little piece for our service and I want to share what we believe. Where there are divisions of opinions, beliefs, and perspectives, we embrace curiosity, exploration, and expanded awareness of the gifts of diversity. Where there is fear of the other, we stand for inclusivity and peaceful acceptance of another's right to create the life of his or her choosing. Where there is oppression and hatred, we stand for justice and understanding and for extending compassion, kindness, and forgiveness to restore balance. Where there is discrimination, we stand here at Unity of Joplin for inclusivity and for equality. All are welcome. And we are so thankful to have you here today. Please join us for our call to worship song, Surely the Presence. Knowing there is only one presence and one power active in the universe and in my life. 
God, the good omnipotent. Yes. And we have our mission statement. We always like to repeat this together as well. Our mission is to inspire, encourage, and affirm divine freedom within each other. And we do that through a, a vibrant vision. In fact, Unity of Joplin is a vibrant, progressive, spiritual movement where all are welcome as we co-create a world that works for all. Good morning. The word for today is free. And the affirmation, I am one with the freeing, guiding force of God. Together, I am one with the freeing, guiding force of God. When I think of freedom, I imagine a bird in flight, soaring above the earth. As the bird glides, it seems to effortlessly move through the air. Then it flaps its wings, moving upward and forward against the force of gravity. Likewise, I open my mind and heart and feel the freeing force of God within. This force is powerful and peaceful, and I give myself over to it. As I do, I overcome stifling feelings of stress or doubt. I trust in God and I move forward and upward with renewed purpose and confidence. Just as a bird overcomes gravity to fly with purpose, I overcome the challenges and circumstances of my life to find my purpose and live for my divine nature. I am free. And the scripture is from Hebrews 13, 6. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? The word for today is free. And together, affirming these tithes and offerings are dedicated to the will and work of spirit through unity of Joplin for the highest good of all. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We'll now move into our special music, followed by... Rachel's Down message in lesson. Heck, it's like, it's okay. the greatest thing. Oh, for all of us? No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I ex but we look forward to your music. Thank you.
greatest thing in all my life is serving you. I want to serve you more. I want to serve you more. The greatest thing in all my life is serving you. The greatest thing in all my life is loving you. The greatest thing in all my life is loving you. I want to love you more. I want to love you more. The greatest thing is loving you. Oh, what incredible music. Thank you so much for sharing your gift. So as we center ourselves into the words of that song, I just invite you to sink a little deeper down into your seat and feel the support of your whole body, of your back. And I invite you to just take a deep breath in and release as the breath is our cleansing start, but it's also our reminder of the oneness of the connection that we all share. So as we move into this time of meditation, I invite you to feel your feet grounded on the floor. Finding your natural breathing pattern, what fits best for your body. You may want to tilt your head back and forth Shrug your shoulders. And surrender. Surrender into that divine support that God is. And as we allow ourselves to relax and surrender into that space, We gather gently any distracting thoughts, any thoughts of worry or doubt, concern. We gather those so gently and compassionately. And for this time, we move those aside. We move them out of our awareness. feeling open, I invite you to imagine a light shining from within and radiating out like sunbeams. We may start with a small flicker. And as we breathe, this light grows and grows and expands. And it's this energy, this loving light that connects each and every one of us. And we continue to expand and expand. And as we feel that connection, I just invite you to harness this. And 
breathe into that connection of all. As we take this realization of oneness, of the unity of all, powerful, increasing and increasing light, We bring ourselves and all others into that sacred space of the silence. Knowing oneness, feeling oneness in the sacred silence. As we bring our attention and our awareness back into this space, we feel how that oneness, awareness has expanded within us. We acknowledge the connection with all of life that we have. And we know the truth that we are in the flow of life, each and every one of us connected, no matter where we are in this beautiful unfolding journey. And we expand our light as we each carry on on our own divine journey. And for the divine guidance that supports us down this path, we acknowledge with gratitude that sacred support. We breathe in that gratitude and we release that gratitude. We share this energy and this space together. And for this, we are ever so grateful. And so it is. Amen and amen. <laughs> Good morning. Now, Anne did mention that we love our music. I thought I'd get a little exciting this morning. So we're going to start with a song. And I want you to listen to the song. Some people may be familiar with it. Some people may not. So if you don't know the words, enjoy the words. Just listen to it. Let it sink in and see how you feel with it. If you do know the words, I invite you to sing along. Hit it. Snap, you can clap, you can move your shoulders. <laughs> it's called I Love Myself So Much.
on TV. Movies, magazines are just like me. The media and school say to be this way. We're all unique, that's what I say. Each of us is born with a great big heart. We give and take right from the start. We can trust there's enough for everyone. So we show our love, happiness, and fun. It's tough sometimes to make it through the day. Friends and family pulling you a different way. Believe in yourself and your dreams can come true. point those those words sometimes it's uncomfortable to hear words like that right I listen to this song and I'm not gonna lie I'm a crier to begin with <laughs> I remember the first time <coughs> that I heard this pardon me this song and I fell apart I fell into pieces I thought oh, hold on what I don't know that I love myself that much, but I know that I love other people. It's kind of a struggle sometimes. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about that self-love, how to plant that first seed if it's uncomfortable to hear those words. If we're there, today we're going to expand on this love that we have for ourselves so that we can love others in a greater capacity. What is self-love? What is loving ourselves, And why is it crucial to be able to do this as we expand in this spiritual development? Well, self-love, as defined in our revealing word, written by a co-founder of Unity, Charles Fillmore, he defines it as care for one's own happiness and well-being. Care for one's own happiness and being, well-being. He goes on to say that this care is entirely compatible, I love this, with justice, with generosity, and love for others. I'm sure we've heard that saying, you can't love others if you don't love yourself. So we're going to work on that. In Luke 10, 27, we read, Thou shalt love the Lord with all their heart, their soul, with all their strength and their mind, and love themselves as they love their neighbors. Who heard that song and thought, I'm struggling with loving myself, but I know that I have compassion for other people, and that I love generously with others. Some of us may find ourselves there from time to time. But just as we sang together, love, love is the answer for yourself and for others. So let's think about what love is. There are so many different types of love. Love as Charles defines it, is that pure essence of being that binds together the whole entire human family. Close your eyes and imagine that just for one moment, that love 
is the pure essence of being. It is the connection that we imagine during that meditative state. It is what brings all of the human family together. Of all the attributes of God, love is undoubtedly the most beautiful. And in divine mind, love is the power that joins and binds in divine harmony with the universe and everything in it. Every thing in it. Love is a divine expression. Love is the great harmonizing principle known to man. Once again, love. Love is the answer. Love is the healer of humankind. But how do we extend this love to others? Right? And how does that grow our self-love? My favorite part of this definition I'll read now Divine love is impersonal. It loves for the sake of loving. It is not concerned with what or who it loves, nor with a return. No expectation. Oh, love, as the Fillmore's taught, is like the sun. It's joy. It's joy is in shining forth in its nature. In Corinthians 13, 4, we read, Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not. It's not puffed up. It's not ego-driven. So when we think about planting those seeds for self-love, we're taking those seeds of divine love of that pure essence of being. We don't have to agree with all the decisions that we've made in the past because now, in this moment, we move forward into newness, into this new opportunity in the realm of possibilities. I love staying in this realm of possibilities, whole new answers that we may never have imagined for ourselves. Love is that inner quality that sees good everywhere and in everybody. Folks, is this not the Easter view that we have continued to strive and see from? This is that space, that, that space of higher consciousness where we do see the good. We see the good everywhere and everybody. Because where is God? There is no spot where God is not. God is expressing through each and every one of us whether we agree with what other people are doing or not. So we raise ourselves to see it. Love is that great harmonizer. And you, if you've ever heard a group singing, a chorus, a choir, and this beautiful harmony. It feels so natural, so beautiful, and it fits. Love is the great harmonizer for all mankind and the healer for all. Whoever calls on God as a Holy Spirit for healing is calling on this divine love. And I know that I can't be the only one who has called out for this healing, for this space of renewed thought about a situation, about a person, about an instance that may have happened, that may have offended us, hurt us, challenged us, felt like it broke us. We call on 
divine love. Love, love is the answer. Divine love, and we, we hear this term, divine love, it will bring you your own to you. So adjust all misunderstandings, raise yourself again to that Easter view, and make your life and affairs. This is what love can do, the power of it. It can make your life and affairs healthy and happy and harmonious. And what was that daily word today? Free. So let's breathe in. Love, breathe it in. Because it is radiating throughout this space right now. I invite you to consciously accept it into your beings and settle into it. You are incredibly loved, incredibly loved. Are we humble? Humility fits with divine love. It fits with growing self-love. The Webster's Dictionary defines humility as freedom from pride and arrogance. Oh, let's get that off our shoulders. We may have been carrying that for quite a while. Again, it's freedom from pride and arrogance. We are here to love and to be free today. Recognition that the personal human by themselves is ineffectual. By ourselves. When we consider ourselves separate rather than acknowledging the oneness of the energy that connects each and every one of us, not just in this room, not just all the people that are watching online, but this entire universe is one. John 5.30 reads, I can do, I myself can do nothing. Now this might seem like kind of a bummer scripture. Let's follow it up. The Father or the Source or whatever you want to call it, Spirit, the Spirit abiding in me and in you doeth the great works. It's teamwork. It's that co-creative power that we are. And love is the answer. We read that true humility is needed very much in the Christ-centered individual. The true Christian is humble. I'm not the only one who's heard this. Anybody else heard this? Yes, that this is an attribute of being a Christian, of following our way shower, Jesus the Christ, who didn't understand that he was creating something called Christianity. He was standing up for what he knew, which was the truth, that we are all connected, and that love is the most powerful force in our universe. Love will guide us to that eternal life. Love lifts our consciousness to be able to view from that Easter view. How do we get here? How do we find that humility? How do we surrender? Sometimes we want to hold on and control that outcome. How do we surrender? Once again, let's breathe in love and surrender. Do that again. Breathe in love and feel that surrender. Oh. Love, being love, sharing love, and the most important, accepting love, self love is the answer. Love is the answer. <sighs> Divine compassion, and then there's human compassion. 
We can have compassion for others. But I invite you to step into this mindset of new compassion raining down on yourself like a rain shower in the springtime. Just imagine that for a moment. Just compassion for yourself. It's not always easy to accept it, but it is coming to you. Now, we read, as Charles Fillmore has defined divine compassion, that in the heart of God exists an eternal tenderness and mercy for his children. So we are that expression. We are those children. And then we look at human compassion. Human compassion is a characteristic of love and mercy. It's prompted by an understanding heart. An understanding heart. A compassionate mind sees the error, but does not condemn. It doesn't gossip. It doesn't post on Facebook, hey, <laughs> look what this guy did over here. Can you believe it? It doesn't fit with me, so it's obviously wrong. It sees an error. It sees something different, but it does not condemn. So I want you to think back to the last time in your personal experience where you witnessed a decision Maybe it was at work or with your family. You witnessed a decision that you didn't necessarily agree with, right? It made our, our uh, we were feeling a little not in agreement. And I want you to think and become aware of the thoughts that you were holding. Because those thoughts can change. Charles Fillmore said, I have reserved the right to change my mind at any time. Amen and amen. Can I get an amen? We can change our minds at any time. And this is the truth. Because if you just closed your eyes and you imagined yourself having a whole lot of judgment about that thing that you disagreed with, it's okay. Because we have the grace of God flowing in and all around us, and we can change our mind. We can change the way that we think about things because the way that we think about things is the way that we continue to co-create, to see a lesson. We've talked many times. I've shared a, a whole sermon on keep your enemies close. Everyone has something to learn from. Everyone is teaching us a lesson. In John 8, 11, it says, Neither do I condemn thee, I go thy way. From henceforth, sin no more. So, I don't typically like to get you know, where it sounds so negative. So, we're going to rethink this one. So, John 18, Neither do I condemn thee. I'm, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to put a stop right now. I'm going to, just for today, I'll stop that condemning thought pattern, and I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to go in a different way, because I am done making the mistakes in my own mind, judging others, right? We can do this, and we can start today. I'm never expecting perfection, but we are a team. We are a spiritual family, and we are growing and expanding our awareness together. Understanding. God is supreme knowing. That and, with, and man, which comprehends, is understanding. And it knows and it comprehends in wisdom. Now, in order to change our mind, do we need to use our spiritual power of wisdom? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> we bring this understanding and this wisdom back into our awareness to help adjust the way that we're thinking, 
It's like a filing cabinet. Okay, well, this seems pretty out of order. We're going to readjust. Now, in understanding that its comparisons are not made in the realm of form, but in the realm of ideas. This is the space we want to be working in. This is the realm of ideas. It knows how to accomplish things. And one of our powers, our, our wonderful 12 powers, is the spiritual discernment. It goes hand in hand with this understanding. Spiritual discernment reveals that knowledge and intelligence are auxiliary to understanding. So we open our hands to that energy of knowledge and intelligence working together for our understanding. When we're looking at understanding, there are two ways that we are taught here in Unity of gaining that understanding. One is by following the guidance of spirit that dwells within. And the other is to go blindly ahead and learn from the heart experience. I'm going to close my eyes. Who's gone for the heart experience one? <laughs> I'll raise two hands and a foot. Okay. We've been there. We've done that. We may do it again. And it's okay. We're humans. I honor each and every one of you on your individual path because that's what we do here. We accept others, and with that, we accept where we are. We accept our boo-boos, our mess-ups, our oopsies, our I didn't follow, my divine guidance, my intuition, my gut feeling, whatever you wanna call that. But once again, we can change our mind about how we see this outcome. If we slipped a little bit, which would be called a sin, because sin is an archery term. It means missing the mark. It doesn't mean that you've done the worst thing in the whole world. It means that you missed the mark ever so slightly. So when we get back into that alignment with God, We hear, we feel, we're moved to move out of divine guidance. Now, I was sharing a story earlier. We're fostering some, uh, some guinea pigs. We knew one was pregnant. I thought maybe the other one might be. And this happens quite a, quite a bit. Uh, he's just gotten used to it. If I say, my gut is saying, he says, okay, we'll do it. <laughs> So I went out and I, I got this bigger little Heidi for them. They like to hide because they're prey animals and, and they're a little skittish. And I said, okay, she needs a space. This is happening sometime. I don't know when. I didn't question it. I went out, I got the space and I provided it for this new mama. And the very next morning, I come in and there's three babies. There's three beautiful little piggy babies. Oh my gracious. I love it. But it's small things like that. It's small things that I can imagine that each and every one of us has felt moving us. That is the path to follow. As we answer that divine guidance, we fall more and more in love with ourself. We trust ourself to make the best decision for our highest and our highest good and for the good of others. When we don't, we run into some sticky spots, right? Right? When we don't listen to it and it's saying, oh, 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 no, mm, mm, mm. change directions, maybe don't do that. Okay, so I created a, a, a YouTube channel recently. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing, but I had to do it for class. So I think uh, I'm a tech expert. I live with one, but you know, I can do it too. 
I didn't ask for help. But I sat there feeling this intuitive call saying, girl, you better hold on. You don't know what you're doing here. All right, I didn't listen. Okay, I post another video for class. I did not listen. I had a feeling, I had that gut feeling, that intuitive call, that guidance. It was trying to guide me to my highest and my best in a gentle way. But apparently I chose to learn the hard way. <laughs> All right, so we don't need to know the outcome of that story. It just was not as pleasant as three baby guinea pigs. <laughs> it reminded me, even when it's the smallest tinge that you feel, I don't know where you feel it, I feel a call right here. This is where I feel it and that's where I point to. Listen, listen closely. Honor yourself by listening. Because when you're doing that, you are planting seeds that say, I love myself. I'm worthy of taking the time to listen to my divine guidance. I am worthy of the best outcome possible. I listen for divine wisdom. So in the coming week, I invite you to practice, okay, nobody has to turn homework in, to practice observing others without judgment, whether this is people watching or if you're in a specific group. We have our group that meets here at, from one to three every Tuesday. Just observe. You want to observe people while they're driving, if you're the passenger, <laughs> right? Because usually cars are people's safe spaces. If you come up next to me while you're driving, you're going to see a whole lot of... And it's going to be Taylor Swift. <laughs> but watch people and see what you're feeling. Hear what you're saying inside of your mind. Right? And take an extra moment to decide whether you're going to react in a spirit-led way of non-judgment and allow yourself to be intuitively guided in your responses, even if it's a facial response, because I wear all mine right here. <laughs> Take the time. If you have that opposite decision, Take the time if you feel that judgment. It's okay. We're human, okay? So we get a passing grade no matter how it goes this week. But I want you to see and think about your thoughts towards other people. Because what we think about other people and the judgments that we have about other people are typically the ones we have about ourselves. These are opportunities, though. Guys, silver lining. This is the opportunity in that moment to say, I also, with Charles Fillmore and Myrtle, you go, girl, we have the right to change our mind at any time, at any time. So I invite you to do that this week. If you find your place in a space of judgment or condemnation, let's shift it. Let's shift ourselves into this realm of possibility because if we do this, we are saying, I love myself so much that I can love you so much, no matter what you're doing, even if I don't agree with it, I can still send love, that you can love you so much that you can start loving me. And that is our goal. So we are going to go ahead and just reiterate that love, love, love is the answer. So we're going to sing this together one more time. And I invite you to just sing it with all the energy and the love that you have. And I want you to imagine singing this to yourself, to your inner child, to your inner teenager. Okay, some of us weren't so perfect in our 20s. We're singing this to ourselves so that we can release some of these things that we may have been condemning ourselves for. So let's plant the seed because love is the answer. <laughs>
Namaste.